All right, welcome back. So then I'm gonna go ahead and um, do a quick unboxing of this Top Don Thermal Imager. It's pretty much, they sent this out to me uh, to do a quick review, so. Oh wow, it's a big box for a small, small package there. So yeah, that's what we get there. That looks to be um, the TC View. It's basically open Android, so the cool thing about this you can actually use like standalone um, o OTG devices on the go devices along with this. It's kind of like using a regular phone. So that's the TC003. All right. So I'm going to open this thing up. As you can see, that's the packaging. Really nice, high quality packaging. Almost feels like an Apple product from the, uh, the outside packaging. Really nice quality. Five inch display. All right. Five megapixel visible light camera. We're gonna have our, oh nice, look at that. So this is gonna kill the uh, FLIR cameras I got. I got a couple FLIR cameras. Their resolution isn't up to par with this. That's 256 by 192 IR camera. So you got your range here, minus four to 1000 degrees Celsius. OTG right there, nice, works with Windows. So the reason I decided I wanted to try the um, standalone all-in-one system with the screen and everything all together, I feel like they're probably gonna be a little bit more durable and less fragile because I know every time I use my FLIR, the ones that you just plug right into the phone, it's kind of a little, you just feel really, they feel really delicate and you just don't feel that inspired to use them just because they kind of, if you drop your phone, you'd feel like, man, that, that the, the camera's not going to make it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, open this thing up. Let's see what we've got. Nice. Very nice. Look at that. That's quality. And I don't know if it needs to charge first, but I'm gonna go ahead and risk it. See, that feels really good. I'm not gonna feel like when I'm using this touchscreen too. So when I'm using this, I'm not gonna feel you know uh, just hesitant and just just nervous while using this. It feels nice and beefy. It's got a nice rubber outside on it. Yeah, the touchscreen. I wouldn't want to drop that on any gravel or anything like that. Don't get me wrong, but it feels nice and solid. So this is going to be our USB port here. Like I said, I'm going to show you how we can hook up our OTG devices. I've got a, uh, a boroscope that I might see if I can plug in here. We've also got a nice, like for tripod, if you want to put this thing on a tripod to get long-term um, recording. Nice. This is even, this right here, I don't know if you can see that, but that's going to be basically just a, a dedicated snapshot button. So that's pretty cool. And we got a power button. Go ahead and turn that thing on. I'm probably got to hold and press. Nice. Let's put this over to the side here. Let's take a look and see what we got in the box itself, man. Like I said, you can tell a lot about a company just by the way they box their products. And they didn't really, I mean, they got this nice thick, dense foam. I mean, they didn't really cut any corners with the boxing, the packaging. Yeah. So we've got a nice little case here. Semi-hard case as well. Actually, I mean, yeah, semi-hard, I guess. Really nice quality. It looks to be water-resistant material as well. Uh, so, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. And, as you can see, we've got our... What do they call it? A power block? Uh, outputting 5 volts at 2 amps. That's decent. 120 or 240 as well. Transformer. USB-C charging cable and a nice lens cloth. Keep that those screens nice and clean. Unreal, unreal how user friendly this thing is. Like I said, I'm gonna do more in depth. This is just more of like an unboxing and just review, kind of go through it. I mean, I can't really tell you the value of just having an imager that I'm not basically afraid to use or just feeling really uptight about using it to the point where I don't, I don't even want to pull it out of my bag because it's like thing is so freaking delicate like all those little mini ones that plug into your phone they're sweet i like them because top i mean top don even makes the top style you plug into your phone but me personally it's not for me it's not my preference because they're just too delicate for me man like i just have anxiety when trying to use them in the field because i'm feeling like i'm gonna it's gonna slip out of my hand and every time i like brush against the little the actual um device itself it if I, if I bump it ever so slightly, it's going to 
disconnect it intermittently from the freaking phone and then it like crashes the app stuff like that man it's just that's the type of stuff that makes this thing such a it's a total game changer basically man i'm going to be using this thing a whole heck of a lot more than i use my any of my flea or my seek ones uh, just just from that convenience and uh usability standpoint of it it's just crazy how cheap this uh, thermal imaging technology is getting to be honest with you it's hard to believe i mean we're talking Something like this would have probably cost you at least five to eight thousand dollars, you know, 15, 10, 15 years ago. And now you can just have this in the palm of your hand. Definitely wouldn't have been able to fit in the palm of your hand, probably. And now you can just, you know, carry this in your pocket and, you know, pay a couple hundred bucks for it. It's unreal. Like I said, we're going to definitely demonstrate in the field how this thing is going to get used properly for both diagnostic and just general maintenance. I mean, we're going to show you all the uh, sweet little trick tips and tricks on how we can really streamline our maintenances and diagnostics with these uh, thermal imagers, man. Okay, so yeah, we're over here at the home screen now. So I'm just going to go straight to the TC003 app. As you can see, we've got the thermal imaging, we've got temperature monitoring, personal info, gallery. Now let's go ahead and start off with uh, the personal information. That's pretty much how I'd get into it. If you go to settings here, you can see you can actually do some temperature correction here, spot the distance, basically the spot correction and uh, emissivity. And the emissivity is just like the reflectivity of the object. Your distance to spot is going to be how far away the uh, your your subject that you're trying to capture, and then your temperature, your ambient temperature is just the temperature of the air around you. So those um, settings will basically give you the most accuracy possible. Most of the time, it's not really necessary to mess with those, just because for HVAC, you're not really looking for super precision. You're basically more so just looking for relative temperatures. So essentially. If you you do have that option available, if you did want to do a lot more labs lab based testing with this uh, unit for precise measurements, so that's pretty cool that they've got that. We've also got an appendix here, a bunch of uh, emissivity presets, so they're just there as a reference. That's pretty slick. Other than that, you got clear cache. I mean, that's just standard if the thing starts glitching up, I guess. Software bugs and things like that. You'd like to keep that cache clear automatic shutdown I think yeah you do want that active I like to have that on just so I'm saving battery another thing speaking of the battery this thing is actually I mean the battery life on this thing is amazing well don't get me wrong I'm comparing it to the FLIR uh, thermal camera which every time I go to use it that thing is pretty much dead so this thing has been lasting I've only charged it once when I first got it. I've had it now for probably over a week and it's only at 80 percent so it's pretty much like a, a it's basically a tablet so imagine how long a tablet will last you that's pretty much how long this thing will last you've got your temperature unit so you can change it from fahrenheit to celsius there just the language frequently asked questions save settings all right it's just basic stuff i mean the manual that's cool if they've got the manual there available you know if you had any questions pretty much everything you need to know about the unit so so we're gonna head back now let's go ahead and go to our uh, thermal imaging all right, so as you can see, I'm just doing a quick thermal scan here through a house. You see, I've got my uh, Testo 420 there, just checking the airflow, doing a maintenance. But, um, you know, just checking, doing a thermal inspection, looking behind the drywall, seeing if there's any weak spots in the insulation. You can see up on the ceiling, up toward the corners in the attic, there are some weak areas where you can see it's a, the darker spots are colder. That's just due to uh, the insulation up there just being thinned out or you know moved around probably by different rodents and things like that see here is really bad up in in the shower area and uh, like I said with this camera the 40 micro Kelvin thermal sensitivity is definitely allowing those um, differences in temperatures to be a lot more pronounced than even the seek might be so as you can see this camera is very capable for the price point and for HVAC you really don't need much more resolution than this so then you got your gallery which is going to be all the images and photos you've captured there all right, so boom, now we've got that. Let's go back here. We've got the visual image camera here. You already know what that's about. Files, that's nothing crazy. Clock, that's cool. Video player, music player here. Sound recorder, that's pretty sweet. Calculator. And like I said, you got the full on browser. So anything you want to search, you can search that. No problem. You can pretty much download third party apps on here as well which I thought was really sweet. It's uh, This thing supports OTG devices, basically just like a standard Android tablet. So that's pretty much it with that. 
Okay, so as you can see, we are taking a look at the engine compartment here. We just got um, come back from a little drive. As you can see, we've got the hottest point, the coldest point being registered. And as you can see, the resolution is out of this world. And what I'm going to do is take a look at the difference with my Seek Compact Pro. So yeah, you can see with the Seek, has, it's, it's, it's not that great as far as the aspect ratio. It's just really pulled in really close to the subject where in which the top don has definitely got a lot more it's just showing a lot more of what you're viewing not to mention it's got more clarity uh def definition between hot and cold spots as you can see with the seat compact pro it just blows out on the really hot spots um we'll come in around to the side on the brakes i know everyone likes to see hot brakes with thermal imagers Okay, so right off the bat, um, I was noticing the Seek does seem to have a bit more uh, noise or graininess to the image. I'm not sure what that's about. Even more grainy than the FLIR 1 Pro. And the FLIR 1 Pro is definitely a lower resolution camera. So I think it's to do with that thermal sensitivity that gets that graininess out of the image. You can see the top down is definitely the clearest of them all. Another thing I wanted to mention with the top down is the image style. So you can take a look here. We've got dual light look at this overlay you're gonna like this boom so yeah this is a bit different than the FLIR MSX technology because it's actually overlaying not just like a a trace of the um, visible light camera but it's the actual visible light camera being overlaid there uh, with just a you know an opacity slight opacity adjustment there now if you want to do dual light watch this click that now that's going to be the trace of the actual visible light, kind of like FLIR's MSX. You see, it's uh, you need to line it up. So I hit calibrate, and um, you can see I'm just going to go ahead and line these hoses up, boink, oh, boink, right there, like such. And now that's all lined up as far as your parallax there, and it looks amazing. Now you can do visible light. That's how that looks. I mean, that's it's able to pull that. It's able to pull that much of a good overlay from just this very rough, shadowy visible light image here. So the better your lighting, the better that's going to look. Let me see if I can get the light in a more reasonable, especially where it's not washed out. That's better. So we just hit dual light now. Here you go. Much better. Much much better. Okay, so if you look to the right here, um, you can see the FLIR 1 Pro. So you notice it's a really dark environment, so you see a lot of noise, uh, I guess from the high ISO adjustment. I'm not sure why that comes through on the MSX image. The top down has a much cleaner fusion image than FLIR. And don't get me wrong, when you have FLIR in quality highlight environments, it will have a much better fusion look to it. Hit back here. Let's go to temperature monitoring. I'm going to go ahead and hit real time. Generate image. And now what you want to do, you can literally generate the style you want. So I'm going to hit a, I'm going to hit line, and then confirm. Select the place here. Now watch. I want to just select. Let's just select across that situation. Now you can see it's literally monitoring everything, high and low points on that line, right? If I move the line, it will adjust the high and low points accordingly cool thing about it is check this out let that thing buffer it will also graph your trend your trending so watch when I move it it's going to move it up some greater differential so super powerful man so the thing about these thermal imagers is sometimes the base specs could be deceiving so if you look at the seek on paper just on the baseline specs by the uh, resolution of the thermal uh, camera itself, you would think it's a lot better image clarity, a lot better camera, which don't get me wrong, the Seek is no slouch. It looks pretty good, even in comparison to the TC003, but where the 003 shines is where that thermal sensitivity. If you're trying to see like really small temperature differentials, the top don is going to definitely beat out the, the, FLIR, uh, the Seek and the FLIR. Uh, just due to the um, what they call 
thermal sensitivity, and that's measured in microcalvin. So if you look at the FLIR and the SEEK, the, the, the FLIR has got 70 microcalvin, and the SEEK has got 75 microcalvin, even worse than the FLIR. SEEK is trying to compensate with a little bit high resolution, but it really, you, it really shows if you're looking at houses, if you're seeing the studs behind the walls, things like that. The Seek's not going to pick up those studs as well as the, the Top Don or even the FLIR. The FLIR definitely isn't as good as the Top Don. And if you see a lot of people on forums and things like that talking about uh, why these cameras are toys, why they think the non-handheld uh, thermal cameras or anything under $5,000 is a toy, it's usually based around that thermal sensitivity. When you're above that 50, 50 microcalvin range, you're, you're not really... I mean, it's, pretty, it's still a pretty cool tool. It's still usable, but... It's not capturing as well as it should be. It's not capturing the the, the to the sensitivity that um, the higher quality ones do. And as you see, the Top Don TC003, and I think all their t uh, thermal imagers are going to be 40 microcalvin, which is pretty pretty impressive. Remember, the lower the number, the better the sensitivity is. So, like I said, you've got 75 for the Seek, 40 for the Top Don. And uh, the picture shows top down is lower resolution, but it still looks better to the naked eye. And that's just due to that thermal sensitivity. So don't underestimate thermal sensitivity, guys. When you're doing researching these cameras, just make sure you're checking out all, all the specs. And definitely don't go for the most expensive is the best or the one with the best name. Definitely don't be afraid to check out uh, these cheaper, smaller companies because the quality is there. It's undeniable. You got, you're seeing it for yourself. That's pretty much it, guys. Just wanted to go ahead and cover this Top Don TC003 thermal imager. Appreciate Top Don for sending this um, amazing product out to me for review. A uh, shout out to Justin with Top Don. Definitely appreciate you, man. We're definitely going to get a lot more um, footage with this thing, especially coming here in the summer months. Um, I like to use this for diagnostic and maintenance. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.